I often think about my first years in astrophotography. The struggles, mostly. I've been really feeling the need to do some of those photos over. I've experienced so much, and I've also seen so much in the past few years. My equipment has gotten better, and I'd like to think my skills have too. And right when I decided to do it, winter happened. The funny thing about winter, it's the perfect time for astrophotography. The nights are long, and the skies are filled with beautiful things. Ironically, in the Pacific Northwest, it means that I'm not able to see the sky for months on end. And then finally, spring happens. You forget about all the time that you lost, and you're excited about what's coming next. You get to take back the night. So where do I begin? Well, my heart this year is compelling me to revisit older targets. Years ago, I took my first photo of M51, also known as the Whirlpool Galaxy. When I initially captured M51, I didn't realize I was taking a photo of two different galaxies. NGC 5194, the larger galaxy, and NGC 5195, the smaller galaxy. What I found out was these two galaxies are interacting with each other. They're in some sort of a gravitational collision. One of the most interesting features that I find is the star bridge that connects the two, and also the dust cloud that slightly obscures M5195, of which I got neither in 2021. But as I begin to take my nights away from winter, that's about to change. This year I'm armed with fast optics, more focal length, and a very sensitive small sensor camera that's going to get me closer than ever before. It is going to be a really good night. I just got my first sub back and here it is. M51 with my ASI 533 MC Pro through Carbon Star. Oh my gosh. Those are four minute subs and <laughs> that is a lot of data. Oh. 
thing is is I don't know if we're gonna get some of this outer wispiness up here so hopefully we can I hope so but I'm gonna try my darndest it's a lot clearer than it was the last time I was out so fingers crossed we're gonna have a really good night Did I mention that today was nearly 80 degrees? It was uh, the first day here in Seattle where uh, the temperatures got above 60. But the temperature is coming down really fast right now. Uh, it's supposed to be like in the 40s tonight. So. It's getting cold. <laughs> Do you hear that? Coyotes are out right now. <laughs> Pretty close right now, oh my gosh. At this point, I'm just hoping that I got usable data. I'm relying on my 533 MC Pro to crop my field of view. And shooting at nearly 600 millimeters with a six inch aperture, I'm hoping to get some details on my target. The catch here is my resolution is limited to whatever my seeing was last night and I'm looking for some really small details. I'm hopeful, but I had a 50% full moon in the sky too. But let's be real, how much detail could I really get? This galaxy is 31 million light years away and about 400 million years old. I'll break it down like this. There's a lot of science in photography but there's more to it. Photography can invoke emotion and inspire. Astrophotography is special in the way we capture those images. We are capturing light that has been traveling millions of light years just to get collected by our telescopes and cameras. That converts it to an image over time. It's much more than the image, it's the entire experience and adventure the acquisition phase brings. So it shouldn't matter what the image looks like, but I gotta admit, it's really satisfying to see what your efforts become.